to a new Dave's Classic Garage Tours video and today I'm traveling up from Gippsland to Grand Tourer in the far north reaches of Melbourne. It's about a two and a half hour drive. Uh, I had a call, now I've been told to bring a neck brace because this one's a bit special. It's the orange XB Falcon Coupe that I filmed in one of the first videos that went out. I think it might even have been the first. Anyway, it's finally ready. Dan, I believe, is going to be uh, giving us a spin out in it. But first, we'll uh, do a little recap on just what's uh, gone into getting this car back on the road. If you hadn't heard already, Grand Tour have been kicking goals in the Falcon GT world since the mid 90s. And Dan here has been with the outfit pretty much from the start. So there's not much he doesn't know about these Aussie icons. The good gear, eh? Changes yeah, the... Quick detail. Oh, it does come up bright, doesn't it, with that stuff? It does. Changes the colour when you clean it. All right, Dan, she's done. Yep, Fine. nearly it's been, done. Uh, 12 months ago, or no, it was over 12 months ago, I was last. Yeah. Uh, when we first came and yep. filmed it. it so we've been days. doing some test miles in the car. Yeah. Um, we've probably done about 40 kilometers in the car. Right. So yeah, okay. just doing a bit of sorting with it and test driving, do some more sorting. Okay. You know, little things we tweak and yeah. so, so forth. So uh, just remind us all, uh, what, you know, what state did this car come to you in? It actually came as a painted shell. So the owner stripped it himself and he got his own panel leader to do the body and paint and then come to us. So in between that time, all this stuff came to us and we were restoring bits and pieces, components and everything. So right. then when the shell come, most of it was ready to go and a um, few little bits we had to finish off, but makes the assembly process a lot easier. Okay. But uh, this one's definitely not stock, is it? No, nah, definitely not stock. So it almost looks stock in the engine bay, but uh, besides the um, air cleaner, that's the only thing we took the lid off and it's got a like a air filter that's open from the top just so it breathes a bit better okay oh she looks shiny and new that's for sure so it's just a standard 351 2v cleveland so anybody looking underneath the bonnet at a show actually it's a 434 right so it's not a 351 2v oh okay but uh, so anybody looking underneath a uh, show would not notice anything particularly different? No, besides the air cleaner top, usually it's got the covered top, which yeah. you've still got that there. So if you go to a show, you've just got to take this off and put the other filter in, yeah, and put yeah. the top on it. Everything's sort of hidden in it, even because he's got power steering and everything, it's got the Rob Mac fuel pump. It's all down under the pump, so you can't really, unless you get underneath the car, you can't see it. Right. Um, yeah. It's all ice ignition internally in the factory distributor. Um, the only real giveaway is probably the Holly Carvey on it. Right, okay. But besides that, everything else looks pretty stock yeah. and authentic how it should look. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to uh, invite me along for a little uh, Yeah, spin we'll out, go for it? a little test drive. But, um, well, let's have a, just have a little walk around and see what else you've got in the shop. Because I see there's, uh, this is about as yeah. packed as it's ever been, I think. Yep, plenty okay. going on here, so let's we'll have go a have a look. Okay. So we've got a red XW there. We're just doing a few bits and pieces too. Um, okay. So that came, that's not a restoration job that you've... Yeah, it's a resto we did a few years oh, ago. Right. Okay. So um, this one here, this is a Fastback Mustang. Oh, must oh, of course now. Mustang's part of the business now. Yes. Yes, big part of the business now. So right. we're looking forward to seeing a lot more of these coming in. Yeah. Oh, so this is a vintage burgundy Fastback. That's a lovely colour, ain't that one? It's going to be a full concourse build. Okay, well, I'll look forward to seeing that another time. Um, this one, that's not. Yeah, what that's. What colour is that one? It's actually, it's. I'm not sure what red it is, but the factory colour is Brambles Red. Right, okay. So I've got a paint change colour. Okay. Apparently, the guy's wife didn't like the colour, so he painted a different red. But oh, wow. Brambles is more the orangey sort of race colour yeah. they used to race in the day. With Alan Moffat so and stuff. She, so. you must be obeyed. Yeah, so that's actually quite. At the cost of what, 20 grand, 30 yeah. grand? <laughs> that's actually quite a rare colour, that one. Right, um, and it's okay. a highly option car, air conditioning, um, power yeah. steering, sunroof, okay. white trim with cloth inserts. All right. So it's okay. just come in for a bit of mechanical work to the engine and oh, yeah. 
doing a camshaft and other bits and pieces to it. Yeah. Um, okay, and this uh, this is another uh, colour. Yeah, Not so that's um, to uh, many on the streets, is it? We actually just had one green one just left, which was same sort of car, but it was Monza green. Right. Okay. And this one's just come in, which is dual green. This is a metallic dual green. Dual green. Yeah, very Beautiful. nice colour in the sun. Beautiful. You get that goldy metallic coming out right, of the paint. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Oh, there we go. When See the sun that? sort yes. of hits it, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. Not a um, popular choice back in the day, is it? I mean, I don't see many of those. Uh, yeah, there was a few dual greens. Yeah. Probably more Monza green, actually. That was probably more common. But right. Yeah, dual green is probably more my stunning. favourite green. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning colour. So we've just done a service and a little bit of mechanical work and uh -huh. bits and pieces and to it. What's that underneath? So. Uh, I believe it's a 408. All right, okay. Which is a stroked um, 351 Cleveland. Okay. Right, someone over in the corner. I haven't seen in the shop before. Let's go and have a look at that. Yep. Right, before we get to that, what have we got here? Yeah, so this is a Cleveland. It's um, standard stroke 351, um, but it's got aluminium Scott Cook heads and intake manifold. Okay. Scott does a great top end package for these, which really increases the performance. Um, so this is built to face three spec in oh, terms right. of camshaft and everything. Um, so we're just accessorising this, and this is going to be for the Onyx Black replica we're building for Colin. Onyx Black? Yeah, Onyx Black and Ooh, wow. uh, Wineback Sunroof, so it's done as a phase three replica. Wow. So right. it should be a pretty nice car, and that's due back early in the year from yeah. paint. Early 2024. Yeah, so Beautiful. it's looking brand new. We've just got a few other bits just to finish off on it. It's nearly done. Again, okay, was there many uh, black Falcons no. back in the day? There was only one black face remade. Oh, right. And oh. there was only a handful of XYGTs in black, so yeah. it's a rare colour. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Right. Okie dokie, what we got here? Okay, so this is a panel van um, XW. So here's the factory colour we were just talking about Brambles Red before on oh, the XB. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ooh, that, that's Brambles Red. Bloody orange, isn't it? Yeah. So that's its factory colour, so it's going to get restored back to Brambles Red and it'll be basically like a phase two panel van spec. Oh, so wow. Should so look pretty trick. Power. Yeah. So okay. this should have an engine like the XB. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yep. Jeez. So it'll, it'll be 434 cubic inches <laughs> in a panel okay. van, so it should be fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now, blatantly, for our overseas viewers, who might know panel vans in Australia as being a one from the opposition, a uh, a Sandman. Yeah, Sandman. Yeah. But uh, this is definitely not. What was the um, what was the Ford version? They they saw the success they, of the Sandman. They had a Sundowner, they were called. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this wouldn't have been. No, not no. not the early models. Okay. That was more a later thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was later. Like after the. Yeah. All that, so yeah. this. Sorry. What sort of year would this be? This is XW 1970. 70. Okay, yep. so the uh, Sandman didn't come, what, come yeah. out in 74 or something? Yeah, like it was that. a big thing back in the day, the windowless panel vans. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool thing. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Put your mattress in the back and. Uh, and what sort of. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, this was a work. Well, would it have been a work truck or was it too yeah, good? Probably too a, good a nick? Yeah, probably a workhorse, I'd say. Yeah, it's a bit of a project, but yeah. It's coming in decent nick, though, yeah? Not so much yeah, rust it's not, and beating not too up. Bad. As... Not too bad. For a panel van, usually yeah. they're a lot worse than this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been told panel vans are the hardest to, to restore. Yeah, it's probably... Oh, it surprised me, because... I would say because the long, big panels. Yeah. Trying to get them all straight and no ripples. And yeah. yeah. It's a little bit harder than a sedan. Yeah, sure, sure. It's sure. kind of like doing a coupe quarter panel. They're so big. Yeah. And yeah. you see everything in them. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's pop outside and uh, see how the XB goes, eh? Okay. Yeah, that was me shaking.
Damage, at this point I have to apologise. Right. A lot better producer directors okay, than me mate. could have been on top of the sound here. So we'll go line up the steering wheel first. Okay. The problem for me is I'm a shocker at multitasking, especially when there's half a million dollar motors I'm dealing with, or 50 grand paint jobs I'm trying to avoid bumping into. So apparently uh, I need to do that. Is that the right way to do it? <laughs> <laughs> or even tripping right. over hoist legs. I'm trying to keep focus and ask them some questions. All whilst trying my darndest to get out my subject's hair so they can get on with the job of earning a crust. Of course, I should have reduced the levels on the mics when we've gone out in the car, and I could have monitored them while we were going along. That way, so I'd have the, seen uh, them peaking like crazy. A standard GT doesn't have this uh, kind of wobble, no? No, definitely not, yeah. You can tell when you've got big cubic inches under the bonnet. But I didn't, so I'm afraid you'll have to put up with some distortion for the rest of the journey. And once again, I can only apologise. This one is pretty much the same as that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Exactly. And here's the original then. It's on the car. Uh, this is a spare. I think. Oh, spare. Right. Okay. So just got to line up the wheel and just. Yeah. Uh, I usually go along this street here and just follow the line. Okay. Ah, I see. So I need to go a couple of knots. Final back. testing, eh? Good. Yeah. That's interesting. What are you seeing then? It's. Uh, Essentially, oh, you just want to get that as like a T. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, oh, okay. pull it off and just go oh, a couple right. of notches yeah, yeah, over. Yeah. It's about right there. Yeah. Crikey, yeah. You don't want to. <laughs> we'll just check it. We'll just go up the straight again. Was issues with the alternator, and that will get me to uh, explain. So, Michaels, this uh, XB has been in there since the day I first uh, set the camera rolling yeah. uh, here at uh, Grand Tora. Yeah, um, we're over a year year on. Remind us just about the spec of this. This has got a special engine in it, hasn't it? Yeah. So, um, it's this motor does has about six thirty horse. Uh, if I remember correctly, um, it was built by Competition Engines. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a real good torquey motor. It's actually right. really, okay. really, really good torquey So it's all, it's all nearly ready. Yep. The interior's in, everything's been done. We're going to yep. have a, uh, we'll see the um, lovely interior in time to come. Yep. Everything's, look at that. Yeah. Everything's all up to spec here, but it's throwing a problem now and again, which yep. caused by that uh, big engine. You're going to show us what's uh, yeah. So what's, it's, the, what's the remedy? Uh, with it's been throwing belts because uh, 
still running the factory V-belt system. So um, obviously they were never were supposed to support that type of power. Um, so what power would it have had coming out of the Oh, lucky if it would have had, you know, it would have been 200 horse, 250 horse, right, if okay. that. So we're at nearly three, to, uh, yeah, three times the, yeah, exactly three right. times the power. Yeah. But um, they are, uh, so it just keeps spinning belts, especially on the alternator. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we trying to do is so it's been done before so the factory so that's a factory pulley so they from an xb from an xb yep. yep um so the visa the v like the actual v set up in the belt is very low yeah so really you can see here that wouldn't have had teeth back in the day no they wouldn't have teeth just it was would have been a v belt it was a normal yeah. v belt yeah. um but but well, it's only really the contact service is only really the side. Right. So okay. they sort of sit at the top. But, um, and because it's got that, only got that side contact service, if I carve that type of torque, it's going to turn the belt no problem. So um, there's a little trick, and hopefully it works, which we've done before. So that's an XY um, alternator pulley. And that looks, can I just. Yeah, right, okay. and if you yeah, and it's, yeah, this is a bit heavier, but it's not so much the weight of it; it's, it's the way the V set up is in the. It's in the bloody yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that, it's isn't a lot it? heavier, yeah. 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 But um, it's just more the V set up. If you look, the V is totally that. different. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a narrower sort of gauge on the red one. On yeah, the, that's right, and it's a little bit extra. higher. So at least the bottom of the belt will touch the, the base, so you get a bit more uh, contact service. Right. Okay. So what we will do is run a, probably a little bit thinner belt as well. Yeah. So it sits lower in the pulley. And are that you way the modern belts are all teeth toothed. Which yeah, so over here. these days the tooth belt. Back in the day, in the you'd always see these a lot of the just belts never had these teeth in them. Yeah. They were just a, like a, a full V belt. Yeah. And you find that you cannot really buy those those belts don't really they don't really make them anymore, the manufacturers. And like gates and the stuff main. like that. They yeah. all run these type of belts. Yeah. So you sort of got to, there is people that make um, the belt without the teeth in them. Um, you just got to find them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so you got one on order or something? Yeah, about? we've got one on order. I can't remember what the okay. brand it was, but it's definitely not a Gates because Gates don't do yeah. a, a belt like that. Um, okay. So, so yeah, so this will, it'll, won't have any more teeth. It'll just be a, a, a normal yeah. V as that was back in the day. Yeah. Um, you find if these belts, were, they're good if they're on a stock motor, but if they're on a, Anything with horsepower, yeah, they start to, they can give you a bit of trouble right, depending on okay. how much horsepower you got. So, so mate, where does the um, XB buy the popularity stakes in the uh, Falcon community? XB was probably the, I wouldn't say the ugly duckling, but it was oh, probably, right. I'd say the XB and the XT were the two least desirable of the GT range. Yeah. But that's all changed. Right. Um, with the values of them going through the roof. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, for me, I've always liked an XB, but even things like painted bumper bars, right, and, um, yeah. you know, they probably were a bit of a... Just because that change over to, yeah, to the new cheaper style. version. Yeah. Um, they had decals instead of badges on all the guards and boot and everything. Right. Um, so, yeah, whether they were trying to cut costs, and the other thing is... Well, I think there's the fashions of the day, obviously, the uh, yeah. painted guards and... Yeah, the other thing to do with them is the... Um, Pollution, um, so all the pollution stuff started to come in. So they, they ended up they went into the sort of two best lumber heads and all the pollution gear, which sort of killed the motors and right, right, okay. all that kind of thing. So well, yeah, that had a lot to do with it as well. Were the was it Cleveland's and Windsor? Uh, were they as stunt as, as the American versions in the uh, way of you know? Yeah, I, I, I know they always had their pollution stuff over there even you, you see in the early Mustangs uh, I think California had a lot of pollution gear uh, had all pumps on the motors and it sort of smothered the engine bay I actually just restored a, a fast vac Mustang for a guy probably a year ago and they had that much stuff bolted on this little Windsor engine I couldn't believe it it's you open the engine bay there's hoses and pipes running everywhere and it just like in a, in a car you want to pop the, uh, the stuff on it and and, uh, was that? <laughs> that was just, uh, I must just be the talk, gear, talk of the motor. <laughs> you can't even turn the bloody thing into what's the hell. The 
best part I like about this big cubic inches, and it doesn't have to have a massive cam. It's got, uh, I believe, it's got a hydraulic roller in it. So even from this, like third gear, we're doing 30, 40 kilometres an hour. So you can basically power steering and everything. So you could put someone else in the car that can't drive a big car and everything. It's like driving a new car. Right. Right. And this feels really nice. Everything's tight. The steering. Yeah. The shifter. So all that stuff, it's very easy to drive. Yeah. And then you've got plenty of ponies when you want them. Yes. And you can feel that she just wants to get up and go, eh? Yeah. Definitely got that nice V8 noise. Yeah, definitely. The other thing is too, like I, I always hear of Americans never like the the Ford or Falcon. They never class them as a as a muscle car and stuff. Right, yeah. Well, that's these, nice. these being a two door, you know, that's uh, something pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a weird uh, Aussie thing, isn't it? This. Um, so you can't even turn it. What's this gear? And that's not even trying to do it. That's just trying to take off. And especially on those skinny tyres, crikey. Yeah. yeah. Um. I was going to say the yeah this uh, funny thing with the you know Aussie. Um, Loving the four door saloon as, as much as it's Yeah, exactly. I mean, wait, they didn't have a. I suppose the Falcon came, the early Falcons came in two door, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. early, well, early American Falcons did, yeah. yeah. You could buy like a 60s American Falcon. Oh, so um, the ones sold over here, uh, built, or built over here, they never came in two yeah. door? Yeah, right? not here, no. Oh, right, no okay. They were an American thing. Right. So all the early Falcons, they were all four door. So XR. Right. XR. Um, that was it. Yeah. Besides, if you went into like the X, XPs and all those sort of models, there you could get a two door in those. Yeah. But um, in the way of the later X series XR and that, they were all four door. Yeah. Right, and uh, well, just down the street there is uh, where this baby was built, I guess. Yeah. Would have rolled off that production line over there. Yeah. Port Australia. You can't see it from here, but right down here and over there is Ford Australia. It's actually quite a shame that they um, tore down part of the building and stuff. Yeah, so. I mean, all the design office is still there, isn't it? Um, yeah. The offices, which look like just like the one. I think it's like a miniature version of the one in Detroit, isn't it? some test miles but that was about don't worry I, I did so as the viewers will have seen I jumped when you start the engines so. yeah <laughs> hard to know top speed but yeah because it makes so much torque you don't need low diff gears in it no you can sort of run with a taller ratio absolutely so it's sort of a bit of a bonus all around the cubic inches you've got the drivability but it's makes massive torque 600 foot pounds of torque that's crazy <laughs> I've got a little 347 Windsor in mine. I made, I think, 425 foot pounds of torque. Oh, really? that, that goes good, but yeah. this thing, yeah, different story. Absolutely. And is there many, have you done many of these over the years, like this sort of output? Oh, probably not this much. This motor was built by Zoran at Competition Engines. He built a really good Cleveland motor. Yeah. Um, well renowned in the industry for race engines and stuff, so. 
Yeah, and the best part about this engine, he did all the dyno work, not one leak on the motor, it's really good. Yeah. And that's what you want, you don't want to put someone else's motor they've built, you put it in the car and you've got oil leaks and stuff, he tests all this stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. It's completely dry, even rear mains, everything on it so far, what sure. we've done, it's really good. They start to get into all the more comfort era. You see the XWs and XYs, they're low back seats. And, yeah. You know, just the console, you got your, your rest your arm on there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just all those nice little features. They've got the wraparound dash. You know, yeah. start to get a bit more futuristic in the 70s. Yeah, yeah it's all at hand, isn't it? I just love with this car, my favourite is the orange with the white interior. Stunning combo. That is. that it's come down below two dollars, eh? Yeah. Although this bugger's... Oh, no, he's going to be t yeah, just below two. One good thing about this car, it doesn't have a big tank. It's only got a small tank right. in it, so every fill doesn't hurt the pocket so much. Well, yeah, yeah. you just got to <laughs> go a bit more often, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make you feel driving around. Obviously, the sense of responsibility must be. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've been driving the cars since the 90s when they were worth nothing. Right. So to me, it's just another felt of driving. Right. I've driven that many, I, I would never know a number. But knowing now that you're sitting in a whatever value this is, crazy hundreds yeah. and hundreds. Yeah, maybe a few hundred thousand. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's not necessarily the uh, you. There's the other numbers on the street that you've got to worry about. Yeah, you know, it's always a worry. Especially a car like this, I've always been of the opinion don't drive in the rain because that's always when you're at risk. Yeah. People can't pull up in the wet weather and uh, lock their brakes up and run into the back of you. So yeah. I yeah. personally, even an unrestored car, wouldn't drive in the rain. But it's just more of a risk factor. No, you wouldn't do that. Yeah, on a nice day, I think, you know, you know, you just always got to keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, watch everyone. If there's someone coming out of street, you always slow down a little bit. Absolutely. Just be a little bit cautious. Yeah. But you still got to get in them and enjoy them. What's the point of having a car like this? Yeah. You sit in the corner and don't use it. Absolutely. <laughs> right, well, uh... smooth and this mode is a really good package street friendly it's um, very nice I mean having 640 odd horsepower and it just cruises along like this and isn't a, a pig of a car to drive it's absolutely yeah. Yeah. amazing to drive and I love it so what so uh, what revs are you sitting on at the moment moment it's doing about two and a half. Two and a half, right. Yeah, we're doing about probably 80 k's an hour or so. Uh -huh. And that's a bonus with the 325 diff gears, it's not very 
his head up on the trail. I say you could get it up. You could. That's all you feel. In front of you is probably not the brightest. You could draw this guy to Sydney if you wanted to. Yeah. 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 And we want the yeah the fuel bill at the end would be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's the bit, but that's all part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody's going to be doing it. You know, well, it's uh, you know, for the GT Nationals that have driven their cars up there, or were they? Uh, the majority of people trailing yeah. them up there. A lot of them, like even. Uh, the last GT Nationals in Bathurst, we uh, went up in the Red XB that was on the hoist, so, you know, people get in them and drive them. Yeah. Plenty of car clubs and stuff, so get out there in your cars. Oh, you can pretty much see a, uh, a line up of these in one country town or another every weekend on Facebook. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, and they're getting the enjoyment out of them. Absolutely, as we say. The biggest problem is with these cars now, there's so many investors just buying them and they're sitting them in the corner. It's actually not good for the car. I know no. numerous cars that are being bought. People aren't even really into the cars. They're bought it as an investment. Yeah. And uh, it's been a shame. Fuel and stuff goes stale and uh, yeah. all that kind of thing, you know. It's, uh, uh, what's happened in uh, this post-COVID world of, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the financial situation, whatever, is there, has there been a... Has there been a drop in values at all? Uh, I'd say there's a bit of a drop in value in the not so good cars. The cars that are really good, like this being a high end sort of build, yeah. this car won't drop in value. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's always going to be, and combination is everything. When you're buying a car like this, the combination, the colour, the interior colour, you know, all that stuff, what engines, sunroofs, air conditioning, all those options. Yeah. Like this has got 8-track player air conditioning, power windows, like these are all options on top of a standard one. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, a car like this, it's a desirable thing. Sure, sure. And it'll always come in. There'll be 10 buyers that will want to buy this car if it ever comes up for sale at high money. Right, right. Whereas you get a run of the mill, it might be a, I don't know, automatic. So this is a factory manual car, so it might be an automatic, no options, not a good colour, you know, that sort of thing. It's always going to be that bit lower. Yeah, yeah. We've got the firings here, we just let them go past. degrees today, you yeah. see. Um, wasn't expecting this uh, today, last night's uh, forecast was for cloud and rain. Yeah. We've got a bit of the clouds, so a bit of humidity about, but uh, yeah, I got 33 when I was driving here today. Well, that's the beauty of this, look at the temperature it runs on. Yeah. Just under half. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All fresh is good. Yeah. A lot of motors you put them in, they overheat in the hot weather, and uh, yeah. this thing runs beautiful. It's got the big air conditioning radiator, which helps. So we'll chuck a U turn and head back. I think. Uh, Hoping this sound comes through and it's not too distorted with the uh, burble of the <laughs> yeah exactly uh, yeah, it's, um, I think that's what people uh, enjoy that sound eh? yeah it does sound good you get so many comments on a car like this you pull up the lights you get the thumbs up that's yeah. awesome mate they yeah. love it well we just had that uh, chap in the garage there telling us about his um, his yeah. build yeah yeah an XYU and, yeah uh, yeah it's amazing what all these guys come up and want to have a chat at the service station and. It sort of makes you proud of the work you do. I'm sure it does. Because you um, have all people praising what you've done to the car. It really gives you a bit of a kick. Yeah. Thank you. 
little skinny tyres compared to yeah, exactly. you know, our new, uh, something new. It's so much more of a, uh, an experience. Yeah. That's the other thing too with the cars, we've got a thoroughly test them, and you do need to sometimes give them a little bit of a hard time to see what's going to fail on the car as well, because the last thing we want to do is give the car back to a customer and he gets in and then he puts his foot down in it and something breaks or something fails on the car. Yeah. The mechanical thing, there's always going to be little teething issues when you first build a car, and that's all part of the sorting and putting the miles on the car to the shore to get the sorting and oil leaks and you know, anything that may pop turn up. Yeah. So yeah, we go and do all that stuff and uh, makes the car sort of awkward. You sort of put maybe 500 kilometres on the clock, and um, yeah. then you can confidently hand the keys back to the owner and say, yeah, that drive's beautiful. Put some more miles, bring it back in another 500,000 miles, do another check over, and after that you're pretty confident. Right. Oh, well, that's uh, a much more, that's a nicer price, 170, was that 192 for uh, yeah, 98? I like that, I might have to drive up here and fill up before my drive back to Phillip Island. Yeah. Most enjoyable. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Will. On that note, <laughs> there's definitely a smile. On that note, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the film. Uh, go back and see uh, lots of other videos on uh, the Grand Zora, uh, various other cars. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, take care. See you later. Hope you enjoy.